yeah, Bali for me was an initiator into my work with cacao, specifically because I was working with the cacao from the land when I visited and subsequently went to go um, and actually meet the trees on the land. And the more I've journeyed back to the source, back to the literal grassroots level, not only where the trees grow in the soil, but the people that work with the, the land themselves, the small scale fa farmers, the more I pilgrimage back there time and time again, the more I realize how important it is in our work with cacao that we need to have this experience. So that was a very um, big, awen um, big awareness piece for me that this should be some of an offering with Cape Cacao because I got so much out of it. Um, it really just gave me such a much deeper appreciation for cacao um, and, and the whole cycle of life because we are, as people are part of all of this. And the people are also needed in harvesting the cacao and for you know, transforming it into the paste that we work with. And so this for me is, is a whole network of relationship, which is what Mama Cacao speaks of, as all, as, as all of you know. It's about that relationship back to our own hearts, which we can, of course, do without having visited the source. The relationship to people, which we can keep, you know, within a small radius around us. But that relationship back to Mother Nature, here is where this can come in big time and also to expand into real community. Um, because there's a community from the time the cacao seeds are planted in the soil, that community that happens with all the other organisms around the roots. So I'm not going to get into all the, um, you know, all the like permaculture um, or agroforestry principles around this. Um, that's a whole nother rabbit hole that you can go into. So there's a whole community happening there and how the people relate to nature and how the people that work in these subsistence um, spaces, they are so linked in and so connected to the natural cycle still um, the indigenous cultures that live on the land um, and myself personally I live in a very comfortable place I don't need to be so directly connected into the land or so I think in the short term I can go to the supermarket I can go buy my food um, I have cu creature comforts when it's cold I can put the heating on wear lots of clothes I've got loads of clothes in my cupboards um, if I'm bored, I can entertain myself. You know, there's just this instant gratification all the time, yet such a disconnect to where our food comes from, where our clothes come from, where our entertainment comes from. So just traveling and going to a real grassroots level has been um, a really important part of my journey with cacao and something that I, I recommend everybody do if they are serious working with cacao as a practitioner. So you all on this call already, I'm kind of preaching to the converted here, but just to say, this is the bigger context for me, um, why it's so important. Um, so it's just been this beautiful deepening, basically, of my relationship, not only with spirit, but with the ecology that one could say has a spirit in itself of, a particular environment in the tropics where cacao grows, but I can take all the learnings and the teachings that I learn there and bring them back into my relationship here. So, you know, the, the ripple effect is, is pretty vast. People to people, people to land. And just that we are all one big network of energy. Um, and so, yes, through that, uh, I think the, big, the biggest thing to highlight here is it has made me realize my role to play in the world. Uh, to take care of what I can take care of in the natural world and the people around me as well. So very much a heart in everything. Um, there is a responsibility piece here. So yeah, maybe these are just words for now. Maybe when uh, we finish the pilgrimage, we're having our final kind of closing ceremony, um, maybe to link back to what I'm just saying now, and you'll be able to, you know, you have had your own experience by then and hopefully just have a deeper appreciation for the work that we do with spirit and with cacao and with food in general, with plants in general, with other living organisms, um, as well as humans. All right. And of course, we'll be drinking lots of cacao. So that's also why I love going to Bali. Um, Bali for me, one more thing on that, because why Bali? Why didn't I go somewhere else? Um, and I have subsequently, but um, Bali was just, it was, I was just guided there. And at the time, um, there was a beautiful uh, healing journey I was assisting another um, friend with, 
around uh, her womb healing. She happened to be living in Bali. We spent quite a lot of time together, specifically working with cacao. She now has two little babies, which is beautiful because before she didn't even want them. So there's also just like a beautiful link in there with a very feminine space. Um, that gave me a lot of empowerment to assist others um, from the womb space as women. And also, I already had a big interest and lots of practices um, within the Hindu culture. So if those of you don't know, haven't been to Bali, um, the Balinese Hinduism is a kind of very, for me, a very special kind of type of Hinduism. Um, so I was just very comfortable with that part of the culture. But I found that very fascinating to learn all their subtler nuances or different kind of takes from the Hinduism I was familiar with, um, having practiced and studied yoga and having traveled to India a lot and vastly. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of like and still is a melting pot for me of many different traditions. Those of you who have been to Bali or have lived there or work there, um, you will know that there's also a beautiful um modern day eclectic mix of um, expats and tourists, yet the local culture still is very 